Ding dong, the lion, manipulating, gaslighting, neglectful, alcoholic, cheating, sitch is dead. So last time we talked, Gwyneth Westwood, the founder of my not so berry challenge, stayed at home while her daughter and our heir, Rosalie Bastianich, enjoyed the last day of her senior trip alongside her boyfriend, Finley Broke, and her second daughter, Bella Westwood, began setting up for Winterfest. After she was done setting up, Gwyneth sent Bella to San Nishuno to spend the night with her alien baby mama. Tanisha Stallings, Gwyneth using this as an opportunity to invite her ex, Joseph Bastianich, over to discuss the details of their separation, but to Joseph's surprise and demise, it was all an elaborate scheme for Gwyneth to gain knowledge about his assets before killing him, Joseph is officially Jova, and I don't think anyone will be missing him. After cleaning up all remaining evidence of his visit, as well as all evidence of basement pitch the second, she patiently waited for her family to arrive back home to open presents, adding a few last second details to the Winterfest tree, and while decorating, Gwyneth also enjoyed her very last Simgarit ever. She picked up this terrible habit due to the stress Joseph was constantly giving her. She needed to prove to herself and Rosalie that she was better than him when it came to her own addiction, she would conquer it and not make excuses for it. She enjoyed her last smoke ever before selling all the packs in her inventory. Girl, I get you, quitting nicotine is rough. She then lit the fireplace, played some festive music, and got started making some holiday French toast for the family. With Joseph gone, she's really gonna have to learn how to cook. That was probably the one thing she'd miss about having him around LMAO, but she thought she did a pretty good job, and she finished just as her family had arrived back at home. The first person to arrive back home was Rosalie. Gwyneth was thrilled to see her. She missed her so, so much, and wanted to know everything about her senior trip. She had the time of her life. There was so much she had to say, but Tanisha and Bella walked through the front door. A wave of relief washed over Gwyneth, as she once again had her entire family underneath her roof. She missed them all so much, nothing was better than having them around. They got to chatting, eating, and opening gifts. Tanisha and Bella had a wonderful time together. They watched movies, baked cookies, and went for a walk around the city. Tanisha showing her her favorite spots. Bella also learned a lot more information about her alien abilities and life on Sixum. Rosalie then discussed her Salvadorada trip. How she explored the jungle and the ruins. How she loved the city's nightlife and the culture. And how her boyfriend Finley booked the two of them a romantic getaway to Tartosa for their birthdays this weekend, and how he told her he loves her for the first time. Gwyneth was so happy for everyone, especially Rosalie. She was glad she finally had a positive male figure in her life. Someone that makes her smile from cheek to cheek and someone who makes her feel safe. She deserved it after everything she's been through, but luckily, she would never have to deal with that again and would never know about what occurred in this very room room just a few hours beforehand. Well, a couple's trip to Tartosa, Gwyneth mentioned that things must be getting very serious with Finley, who'd conveniently just arrived to their house. Excited to see his Winterfest sweetheart once again, Finley came inside when Gwyneth's back was turned. Him walking over to his girlfriend to sneak her a kiss on the cheek before greeting Gwyneth. She was so happy to see Finley again, and after they wished each other a happy Winterfest, Finley surprised Gwyneth with a gift just for her. It was a puzzle. Rosalie may have told him she's working on her logic skill. What a thoughtful gift. She gave him the biggest hug, telling him she was so happy he was spending the holiday with them. He then asked if he could borrow her daughter. The two of them heading out of the house and down to the beach. He had a Winterfest gift to give Rosalie as well, but not without a kiss under the mistletoe first. They're so fucking cute. The not so berry rules pain anyways. He didn't really have much to give her this holiday since he blew all of his money on their upcoming trip. But he promised he'd make it up to her as he presented a bouquet of flowers and a box of chocolates to her. Rosalie doesn't need him to buy her expensive gifts. Having him in her life was enough. She was grateful for everything he'd ever done for her. She could only imagine how expensive the Tartosa trip was. He fed her a chocolate or two. And she 
gave him the biggest kiss ever. She still hadn't said it to him, but she loved him so much and loved the idea of showing him that love. Girl is so incredibly H-word, oh my, and so is Finley, on Sim Jesus' birthday. And with that, it was time for the family to leave for Winterfest dinner. They travelled all the way to Mount Komorebi to eat at a popular sushi restaurant. Gwyneth ordered a bottle of champagne for the table as they waited for their food. Bella was in her own world, colouring away at the placemat as the rest of the family was browsing the menu. Gwyneth was using this opportunity to get to know Finley better, such as asking about his family, what his plans were for college, and what he wishes to do with his life. She found it surprising when Finley told her he wants to be a personal trainer, maybe even open his own yoga studio one day. He loves yoga. It helps him relax. Besides that, his home life is the most stable it's ever been, and he plans on attending Foxbury Institute alongside Rosalie and will pursue a degree in biology. And Gwyneth also found it surprising when Rosalie poured herself a glass of champagne. Hey, it's her last night as a teenager. As long as she's being responsible and isn't picking up her father's bad habits, Finley poured a glass of champagne for himself as well putting he and his girlfriend in a flirty mood. But they had to go easy on the drinking. They had a long night ahead of them. Rosalie then told Gwyneth the story of how they fell in love, and how Findlay confessed his feelings first, and how he punched a guy that called her the S-word at a party. Findlay was just appreciating being hyped up. Ole Mayo. They sang Winterfest songs, celebrated the holiday, and continued chatting once their food arrived. Bella with her fucking Dr. Pat Pepper Elameo. Turns out Findlay wasn't a big fan of his meal, but he wasn't going to complain. He was just happy to be here with Rosalie's family. They made him feel so welcomed. Rosalie, why are you telling these woohoo lies to your younger sister? And you want to woohoo with your boyfriend? Yeah, we're getting that protection for you stat. They had their meals and enjoyed their conversations. But Rosalie and Finley asked if it was okay for them to leave dinner early. They wanted to go out for the night in celebration of Rosalie's birthday, maybe to a movie or something, and by movie, she meant the club. Rosalie really wanted to go clubbing with Finley back in Salvadorada, but since he was too tired, he promised to make it up to her, and he knew some great places in his hometown of Newcrest. They had to do at least one more illegal thing before they age up. They headed to the dance floor, Rosalie in her newest, revealing outfit and heels that she couldn't walk in. She loved going out with Finley, and she had no worries about the revealing clothing she wore. She knew he wouldn't let any sleazy guy put a hand on her, she knew she was completely safe with him. The club was packed, an amazing turnout, and the DJ was playing the best songs. This is exactly how she wanted her first clubbing experience to go. She was having the time of her life, seemed like Finley was letting go a bit too. He's pretty respectful around her, with the exception of his hands occasionally going to far down south. But she liked when he did that. She wanted him to touch her. She wanted to feel him want her. He didn't get nervous when she danced on him or pulled him in closer. She wanted him in every way possible, and it felt good being able to show him. After all that dancing, Finley told her he was taking her to the borough and tonight, she wasn't having a mixed drink, she was gonna try alcohol straight. Rosalie truly did not understand what she was getting herself into. The mixed drinks tasted good, so this shouldn't taste so bad, right? Girl, wrong. Finley ordered her a shot of Jose Culvo. I know your chest's on fire girl LMAO. She would definitely have to get past the taste, but besides that, she loved how it felt. She swore she could feel it in her veins. Right off the bat, she was feeling it all over. So, once she managed to stomach the rest of the shot left, he ordered them both another, but doubles. And Gurley was drinking it like water, she was extremely fucked up, and all she wanted to do was inhale Finley's face. She lost her fucking shoes bitch. In her head, she was begging Finley to take her back home and just make a move on her. She'd never felt this H word in her entire life. The intensity of these feelings were painful, but she knew that he wouldn't. And that's when she remembered how lucky she was to be able to call Finley broke her boyfriend. So they headed back to Rosalie's house in Windenburg and crashed the second they hit Rosalie's bed. They had to regain their energy before Rosalie's birthday and then before leaving for Tartosa. 